In my family, I was uh, I'm the first person that went to school. My mother believed that if I go to school, I'll be empowered to be able to shape my own future better than hers. So she encouraged me to go to school. She did everything she can that I could go to school. I didn't get sex education at home. Mm. My mother didn't tell me about sex education. I learned it in school and through the works of a non-profit organization, I learned about my sexuality and, and how to be assertive and how to be who I want to be, you know, that really encouraged me to, to do that because a lot of young women in my community didn't have access to this information. And because of that, they fell into the wrong hands of friends um, that led them a different way. I was raised in a community that had problems with access to water. The only source of water we had at home was a stream, and the stream can only work when there's enough rain to fill it. And of course, being the only source of water in that community, everyone goes there to fetch water. So there's this young lady who needed to fetch water for her mom to cook food for her, so that when the father comes from work, he can find something to eat, or the father will say the wife is lazy. So she went to fetch water in the stream, the stream had dried up. And then, because her mother needed water so, so much, I don't think the mother cared where she got the water from. All she wanted was the water. So she had to go to the next community. And because the community is foreign to her, it's not something she's very comfortable with because it's not her community. She doesn't know so many people there. She was raped. At that point, she had, her future had been disfigured somehow. She was traumatized. Imagine being raped. And being raped as a young girl, it's, it's something shameful you don't want to talk about. Of course she didn't say about it. She got pregnant. In that, in that process, she was exposed to so many things. She was exposed to HIV and AIDS. She was exposed to, uh, to other sexually transmitted diseases. And she wasn't that assertive, you know. I sometimes wonder, did she have access to know about her sexuality? Did she have sex education at school? Did she have at home? You know, was she that empowered? No, she wasn't empowered. And of course, being pregnant at home without a husband is another bad thing to your family. Because as a young girl, you're not supposed to be pregnant, you're supposed to be married and then you know, move to your husband's house. Of course, her life has changed from there. She was traumatized. And she definitely would need help to be able to move back on track to her future. I just got news back home that about 300 families have been displaced because of torrential rainfall in northern Nigeria. And these families are currently being sheltered in, in, in a nearby school or mosque with one of the worst conditions ever. Imagine a young girl who's been displaced, who is in that community, who is like now confused about what's going to happen to her, who will now become exposed to so many things. When a young woman is not engaged meaningfully, she's tend to do something else, especially when she doesn't understand her sexual reproductive rights and health. Imagine the wives of the husbands who've lost their farms. Imagine how traumatized they would be, how they feed their children, how to support their husbands in such a situation. It's a very complex issue. I think this is a clear example for us to take action about climate change now. In the past four years, climate change issues back home has been among elite organizations and elite people. The talk of involving young people wasn't very common. So I began advocacy in terms of having young people, having your voices heard because their future will be affected by the impact of climate change. Back home I said, my peers will spend the next 40 years of their life decarbonizing the society. So you must take them seriously now.